Thanks for coming. I'm so excited. So, and we are connecting to Facebook Live. So thank you for those who are signing in. We like to start a couple minutes early so we can get the live stream and start a watch party and share the Sea Scout group. So that's, that's why we start now. Okay. Okay, we are sharing. All right, we have shared to Sea Scout groups across the country. Thank you for everyone who's tuning in live or on our webinar. Now we'll start a watch party. or on our webinar. Okay. We're live. I'm going to start a watch party. Okay, so it is now 1800 on the West Coast. It is uh, 2100 on the East Coast. Our presenter tonight is Izzy. And for those who are asking, we can watch on Zoom or on Facebook Live. We have both. And I uh, will monitor chat and comments on both this evening. And uh, we have chat coming in as well. So everyone is in a great mood. Uh, if you have questions, please use the Q&A and we'll do our best to answer those throughout the uh, webinar tonight and or on Facebook, and we'll have a rip boring good time. So with that, turn it over to our present presenter tonight, Izzy, who is out of Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, she is one of the co-hosts of the Lookouts podcast, and worth noting, she's been accepted to the Coast Guard Academy. So take it away, Izzy. The floor is yours. Great, thank you so much. I'm so excited. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um, and we can get it started. Josh, it looks like you've disabled screen sharing. <laughs> Just if you wanna pop on really quickly. There you are, go right ahead. There you go. Thank you so much. Okay, awesome. So hello everyone. I am so excited to be presenting today. So glad to share a little bit about my experiences with sailing and starting off with just the basics of it. Um, and thank you guys so much for being here. I love how it's virtual and I can connect to everyone nationwide. So let's get started. Just to start off, I wanna talk a little bit about myself, my background. I am the immediate past bosun for Sea Scout Ship 1959, as well as the National Sea Scout Podcast co-host. I am US Sailing Small Boat Level 1 certified, which I actually use for that certification at Eastport Yacht Club. I coach a range of boats from keel boats to dinghies. I'm the team captain for the Annapolis High School sailing team and I sail year round. So I love being out on the water and I'm very excited to be able to share my knowledge with you guys. So diving right in, I'm gonna go through our agenda for tonight. We are going to do a really quick review of the points of sale so that you can keep that in the back of your mind as we talk about jiving and tacking which are our next things on the list. And then I'm gonna men review some things on downwind sailing. So that's gonna be wing on wing and reaching. This might seem foreign to you at first, these names, but don't worry, by the end of this, you'll know what they mean. So I'm very excited and let's go straight into it. Okay, so just to review points of sale, this right here might seem a little daunting for other people. It might seem something that you're really familiar with, 
There is the arrows represent the wind direction. So that's something that you can notice through looking at flags or even where birds like the way that they're all together and they're grouped and they're looking in the same direction. That's another fun way of knowing where the wind's coming from. When you're facing directly into the wind, that's called an iron, also the eye of wind eye of the wind. And at that point, your sails are not going to be filled and you're not going to be moving if you're a sailboat. So you cannot move forward if you're in irons. We'll go on to the next uh, points of sail, which are the upwind points of sail. If this uh, is your first time looking at the points of sail, feel free to just think of it as upwind. And that's going to be where it says close hauled and close reach. So that's where you're the closest to the wind, but sailing forward. And then you have your beam reach, also known as reaching, and that's where you're exactly perpendicular to the wind. So that's going to be actually your fastest point of sail, fun fact. And then we're on to our downwind points of sail. So that's broad reach and running. You're running straight away from the wind. Um, and we'll go through all the different ways to maneuver around so you can go, your boat can maneuver all through the points of sail. So if you want to take a picture of this slide so that you can kind of follow along throughout the presentation, feel free to do so. It, once again, if this is like a little new to you, feel free to just stick with the basics of going into the irons and you know that you can't move forward. Your boat, your sails don't have any wind flowing through them um, in irons. And then you have upwind, reaching, and downwind. So those are the key things to just remember. Okay. So using a little bit of our knowledge from the points of sail, let's think about tacking. This is when your bow of your boat, that's the front of your boat, turns towards the wind and it passes through that in irons position. So remember when I was saying that your sails cannot, cannot, cannot your boat cannot move forward when you're going through the eye of the wind? That's what it is and that's why you're using your tacking to go from like if you see this boat here that says close hauled, when you're going from close hauled to this other side of the close hauled, that's when you know that you're tacking. So I want you guys to notice that the sails on this position um, of upwind sailing are all very closed in. It looks like they are close to their boats. Um, and that's why it's really important to remember that when you are tacking, you have your sails pulled in. Looking at this picture right here, you have a diagram of how you can sail upwind. So this is just a demonstration of sailing upwind and why it's important to know how to tack because you can't obviously go straight to the eye of wind. So the only way to get from a location that is straight upwind is by tacking. And that's this diagram right here. Um, each of these little switches, changes of position on your upwind course are tacking. So that's when your boat goes. And we'll get into a little bit of how to do that now. So I'm gonna show this video really quickly and just kind of gonna show you guys the first demonstration of attack. And then we'll get into the details of how your boat can tack. There you go. So enjoy that video from Annapolis. You can kind of see the background if you've been there before. All right, I'm gonna go through the quick steps of um, how you can tack your boat. But the first thing I want to mention is that you do want to have your sails pulled in. This is really essential or else you'll get stuck in irons and your boat can't move out of it easily. The next step, and I'll show you guys. So just watch the sails this time and you'll notice that the sails go from the different sides of the boat. Um, and you can see that there's that little transition right there. My sails also are trimmed in all the way. So that's the first step. You can see I kind of pull in my sail and then I, I'm pushing the tiller towards the boom. And it's that pushing towards the boom and pulling in my sail that causes this momentum to change the boat's direction. So let's go through the steps and I'll go to the next slide. Um, there we go. So I'm pulling in my sail and then I'm pushing the tiller towards the boom, which is away from yourself. So if you're skipper, you're sitting uh, across from the boom. And so you're going to push your tiller all the way towards that sail. And you also want to look forward when you do this as a skipper. Um, this is really important because when looking forward, 
you're knowing where you're going, uh, but when you're looking backwards, you're not doing that so much. So I'll play this video so you guys can really see. So that's just another pic video of it. And I'm actually gonna go back to this other slide so you guys can see what the, what the crew is doing. So in this position, you'll see, I, let's, the crew is the one that's sitting further forward. So that's, my crew's name is Josiah actually. And he's in the bright orange dry suit. It was a little chilly that day. And so let me show you this video and watch, watch what the crew's doing, watch his maneuvers. So first thing he's doing, is he, if you see his hand right here, it's kind of picking up the jib sheet so that he can pull the other jib sheet through. So on 420s, we have something called cam cleats, which basically lock in your jib sheet. On an FJ, you won't necessarily have that. Instead, you'll just be holding on to it, but it's important to still let go. So that's the main thing for crews. You're letting go of one sheet and grabbing the next. So I'll just play that video one more time. The crew's lifting it up and that jib's flying over and he's bringing it to the other side and cleaning that off. All right, I'm gonna go through the breakdowns for tacking. And this is all those videos I just showed you, that's exactly what it is. The first thing, first and foremost, before you even think about tacking, um, other than looking forward and making sure your sail's in the right trim, is to be sure to look around and see like, okay, are there any boats that I'm going to run into when I, before I tack? And then the next thing, super, super, super important is to say ready to tack. You might also hear like ready about. Um, then you want your crew to vocally confirm that back and say like, I am ready, ready to tack or tacking. And then your skipper will start that introduction. He'll say tack, he or she will say tacking. So then the next step is to, as a skipper, pull in that main sail again and then push the tiller towards the boom. And I know he said this so many times, but I want you to really get into your head that tacking is pushing towards the boom because when you're out on the water, sometimes you like forget and someone will tell you to tack and you're like, which way do I move the tiller? So always push it towards the boom away from you. And then you'll notice that the sails will start to luff and they'll lose their wind speed. And so be sure to duck your head underneath the boom, putting your head underneath that and then switching sides. And then never forget to place your tiller back into its center position. Um, for your crew, also vocally confirming that you're tacking, but then pulling your jib sail. You also, when your skipper pulls in his or her main sheet, you also wanna pull that jib in. That's really essential to going through and completing that entire tack. Um, for the crew, you'll also look forward and notice your jib sail. You'll notice the transition between it being on like one side of the boat to the next side. And I want you to notice that as you go through your tack. So as it starts to transition from one side to the other, uncleat that and start to pull it into the other side. This is really important and you have to make sure that you're uncleating your jib or letting it out to the other side or else who knows, you could um, end up capsizing. I've been in that situation before. Um, it's just something to practice. And I think practice is really important for tacking. I'll be saying this again and again, like. It took me so many times to just keep on practicing to get better and better. I would like to have these four words up here just to keep in the back of your head. Pull in, push the tiller, duck your head, and then switch sides. And this is the little demonstration of tacking once again, how it's going from one position upwind to another. Okay, moving on. So I want to discuss the tacking. When would you use tacking? And this is probably, if you ask any other sailor out on the water, they'll be like, oh, I definitely like tack. Like they know what it is because it's something that you just use so often. In racing, it's how you get to on the up, sail your upwind leg. Um, I have a picture right here that you can see. And this boat is going and tacking just so they can sail upwind. Once again, that's tacking is the way you can sail upwind. And then that's also a way to change direction. And of course, if you're following racing rules and you have to avoid a collision, then one of the best ways to avoid is by tacking and getting away from that situation. I also like to bring up man overboard because I know this is one of our other requirements that we have that people get to practice is um, man overboard drills. And you'll notice that we tack in man overboard drills. So this is your boat here and he goes and he tacks right in this situation. 
and then she'll go up to the man of the person overboard. And so the reason why we use tacking in instead of jiving is because tacking, you're able to slow your boat down. It's a little bit more controlled because you're going through that eye of the wind. So your sails are losing a little bit of their momentum as you go through it. And now I get to talk about jiving and you're like, well, I might, we might use tacking instead of jiving for the man overboard. And now I'm explaining jiving. Um, so jiving is when your, your bow of your boat is away from the wind and it's almost downwind sailing points of sail. It's when your stern passes, which stern is the backside of your boat, passes through the wind. So remember the wind direction's coming from here and you have your boat. So if you wanna go from this starboard beam reach to this broad reach here, or the port broad reach, um, you have to jibe to get there. And you'll also notice that the sails, these sails, these sails are on their port side and these sails are on their starboard side. So that's something important to notice and that's how you can get that transition going. Um, another thing to notice that is a little different from the tacking boats that we had, these sails, you'll notice they're very far out. So they're not in the boat anymore. They're much more eased and that way you can get the wind flow going. Um, running, of course, we'll go into that a little later. So just keep that on your mind. But even when you're sailing and you're sailing running and you're downwind, um, that's how you'll make your transition through driving. So just like with tacking, I'm gonna show the video so you guys can see it and then we'll go through the steps. There we go. First things first, you might notice the sails are further out than they were for tacking. Um, I'm gonna go through these steps for the, the skipper so that you guys can really see what ends up happening and I'll kind of just talk it through. So here, first thing I'm doing is I'm pulling that tiller towards myself. So remember in tacking, you're pushing the tiller towards the boom. This time I'm towards myself. So that's away from the boom. Towards myself, I'm Watch how that boom went by. It was pretty quick too, right? The boom's swinging over. So I'm ducking my head and then I'm doing a little hand switch and sitting back into my position. Um, you'll notice that when I do my dive, I am looking forward the entire time. Not once do I look back at this camera. So just remember, you always wanna be looking forward. So now we'll go through the crew and a little bit about what the crew's doing. You'll notice the sails, well, once, he, once he starts going, he start, his sails are loose and then he's switching those sails over and bringing it to another side. So just like you would with tacking, you're switching the sails from one side to another. Okay, so you guys can take pictures of these steps if you want, they're the super basic version. So it's like pulling in your mainsail. Um, you don't wanna pull it in too much. This also depends a lot on the wind conditions. And the reason why is because when you pull in your mainsail, you're kind of slowing it down a little bit, but that way you can have a more controlled jibe. Sometimes you'll hear like people talking about uncontrollable jibes or little risky jibes that you might have. In heavier wind, I know I definitely pull in my mainsail more. That way I can have a lot more control on that swing that we saw earlier. Um, that's, it really depends on the wind conditions. On lighter wind days, you don't have to do it as much. Sometimes if it's super light, sometimes you do so that, it's a little racing technique, um, but yeah, so you wanna pull it in a little bit just so it's not swinging wildly. Um, once again, pulling your tiller towards yourself and then ducking and bringing your tiller back to center. So I'll share this video. So um, I'm bringing the tiller towards myself. I'm ducking and then switching sides. And this time let's look at the crew one more time. And once again, my crew in the orange hat, he, his name's Josiah. And you can see how Josiah le loosens his sail as we go down, letting it out. And then he's flicking up his hand. And I want you guys to notice that, that, that flick up, that represents how he's getting it out of the cam cleat and then pulling it onto the other side of the boat. So that's something that's really important to notice. Okay, um, I'll play the video one more time so that you guys can just see it. Kind of see how what to look out for. Pulling the tiller towards myself, ducking the head, jibs uncleated, jibs switch to the other side. And also throughout all of those, I'm doing a little hand switch, which I know I haven't mentioned yet, but we'll go into that in just a second. Okay. 
So these are the breakdowns for the skipper and crew for jiving. Um, once again, just as we did for when we were tacking, you are still communicating with your skipper and crew. You should never be in a boat where just the skipper's deciding and you don't know anything that's going on. That's dangerous. So the skipper says, ready to jive. And then the crew needs to vocally confirm, yes, ready. So then the skipper is gonna pull in their mainsail. Once again, this depends on the wind conditions of how much they wanna pull it in. And then he wants to, he or she wants to push the tiller away from the boom. So it's towards themselves. They can also use their hand to bring the sail over. I'll show a video of this in just a second, um, but that's important sometimes, especially on lighter days. So you can really get your sail and your boom to cut across the boat. Once again, switching sides as the boom passes and then be sure to push, your, place your tiller back into its center position. The skipper should really be aware of how much tiller movement they make. On downwinds, especially when you're jiving, you don't need that much tiller movement while when you are tacking and upwind, you can use a little bit more. So it's something that's like, once again, just practicing and getting the feel for your boat and getting used to how much tiller movement you need. Um, but definitely be aware of how much tiller you're using. You don't, you'll notice when you are jiving that you really don't need too much. Um, the crew, other than just vocally confirming that they're jiving, the other thing that they should watch out for is, if, is their centerboard down? So this is something that's super important. Um, when we are sailing downwind, sometimes we'll lift up our centerboard and that's just so our boat can go by fat, sail faster. Um, but you want to make sure that centerboard is down all the way when you jive. I've been in a situation where that did not happen and we ended up capsizing. So be sure to check your centerboard, is that down? And then always keep your jib sailed east when you're sailing downwind. And then as your sail begins to switch sides and you'll notice it because you're looking forward and you're looking at your jib, you'll, you're going to lift up your jib sail, get it out of its clam, clam cleat and then pull it to the other side. So just the steps again, being sure to switch from one side to the other side for your jib sail. Um, I want you guys to always look before jiving. You should never like, oh, just be look, like you're looking forward, but you're also looking around yourself to see where you'll end up when you jive. That's really, really, really important. You don't want any collisions. So remember to avoid collisions at all costs. And then practice. Um, it, watch a bunch of videos for jiving and you'll learn how to do it. Um, keep on practicing out on the water, practice with different people so you can get, pick up different tips. Uh, but the practice is definitely key to getting it. it. Took me a second, took me a while to figure out how to jive, um, but just practice and keep on going at it. Definitely my first jive was a train wreck, but don't worry about it. You just keep on going. So just the four basic steps to remember, um, pull in your main sheet, doesn't have to be too much. Um, the jib can be kept out loose and then pull your tiller. Once again, pull it towards yourself, duck your head. Really, really, really important when you're jiving because that can go by very quickly and then switch sides. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So when you are jiving, and this is a little applied to racing, you might use this when you're sailing downwind and just changing directions. When you are racing, um, you also might use it at a, on a, your leeward mark, so it's your downwind course. And you can kind of see in this diagram, this boat has its sails on its port side, and then it goes to its starboard side. And you know that that means that it's jiving. So it's jiving around that, and that yellow thing is a mark, kind of looks like a sun, but it's a mark. So that's another version of jiving in that wind direction. Whenever you're looking at sailing diagra diagrams, you always wanna look at the wind direction where it's coming from. So you know these boats are heading downwind and they're changing their direction by jiving. So both of those boats are jiving and to get around the course. So that is something to remember. You'll probably end up doing that if you're on a, in a race. Um, then I'm gonna go through the review of what we just covered because I know I covered a whole lot of information. Feel free to take a picture of these like three steps. These are like breaking it down. Um, just you can have like one picture. So the next time you're on a boat, you can like look over it. Uh, once again, communication, always key. I'm gonna play this video um, probably two times just so you guys can see. Me going through attack, sails are pulled in, jib switches, and I switch sides. I want you guys to notice this main sheet pull that I did that I was talking about earlier. 
I lean in and grab it and switch sides. And this is the hand switch that I was talking about. So right there, it's really quick. I'll play it one more, another time, just so you guys can see. It's something that, it takes practice as well, but it's something you can do at home. If you have like a line that you can just use and like a broom even, you can practice trading them behind your back um, from chair to chair, that also works. So I'll show you guys that video. Um, and so you guys can kind of see what you're looking out for. So I go up and I change and I'm grabbing the other one. Um, I'll play this video one more time. Um, I'll play this hand switch so you guys can see it and then I'll play the video all along because I know it's a short video. There you go. And throughout the entire transition, I'm looking forward. I know that when you do hand switches sometimes or you're trying to figure out like, how are you supposed to get to another side when you have your main sheet and your tiller? And that's where it's really key to learn and get down your hand switch. It takes practice, but once you get it, you can do it in your sleep and it'll be super simple after that. Uh, be sure to look forward and you kind of work with your foot moving forward. Your, your back foot goes forward when you cross the boat. That's something that will really help you with your hand switches. I'm gonna play the video again so you guys can kind of see. I might break down a little more onto what is what the details are. So this is attack, and you can notice the sails are pulled in. I'm pulling in my sail. I'm pushing the tiller over. Josiah is bringing the jib sheet over, and I'm switching sides. You can also see my hand switch that I do right there. And then for the jibe. We'll go into it. I'm kind of using that main sheet to really pull myself over and pull that boom over. The jib's already been switched and I, we're both having our sails eased out, bringing that tiller towards myself. And then I'll play the hand switch video one more time so you guys can see, kind of get the details of it. There you go. Okay. Moving on. So these are a little bit about the different variations. If you've got your tack down, feel free to think about these a little other ways to spice up your tacks, especially when you're racing. You'll notice this in collegiate sailing, college sailing, and um, high school sailing will use roll tacks a whole lot. There's a bunch of different types, more than these types. Uh, you have your roll tack, and you, that, that's a picture right here. These two pictures are kind of of the roll tack. So this is kind of the introduction into the roll tack, and that's the final um once you're like finishing off your roll tack to kind of even out you'll notice that the boat is very curved versus the videos it's very heeled over versus the videos that i've been showing you and it's really important to notice that you don't have to do this right now if you're getting into tacking you don't need to worry about that it kind of takes time and um once again youtube videos are a girl's best friend for roll tacking so be sure to look into those uh i would like to recommend that you Think about it though, for sure. Um, it's a good way to, if you've already been sailing and you've been on a boat, like, oh, look into it. Cause it's definitely something that's really fun. And you'll notice that you get some boat speed off of it as well. Other than just light wind and heavy roll tacks, and that's, I'm talking about wind conditions there. I know that as a crew and a skipper, I've experienced having to tack very different ways. And I kind of have it like my six different methods of roll tacks that I do. And that's just going into a little bit of a detailed aspect of tacking and its variations. Uh, but definitely communicating with your skipper about the types of tacks you want. And also just when you're racing or sailing in general, you wanna use communication when you are tacking. Um, that's super, super key. And once again, you're pulling in your sail, pushing the tiller away from you, ducking and switching sides. Just kind of repeat that in your head when you go through those. These are the jibing variations. I'm throwing out a bunch of terminology that you might not know. I said like reach to reach, wing on wing to wing on wing, but don't worry about it. We'll get right into it at the end of this presentation. So we'll explain what that all means. Um, but really there's also roll jibes. So just like there were for roll tacks, that's another way, roll jibes are another way to get speed off your boat from those transitions. Um, and that's something to look out for, different variations as well. Uh, once again, communication, super, super key when you are jiving, especially because you have so much force in that sail when you do jive. 
So don't just jive all of a sudden when your career is hanging out. I like this picture. This is a, actually a picture of wing on wing right there. And you'll notice the crew's head is actually pretty close to the boom. So if you were to just all of a sudden jive as a skipper and not tell your crew, your crew might get really sad because she'll have, he or she will have a headache for a while, hopefully not a concussion. So it's just be sure to communicate. Um, once again, just pulling it in, pulling in your main sheet just so it's controlled. Once again, that matters on how your wind conditions are. Pulling the tiller toward yourself, ducking, watching out for that boom, and then switching sides. Okay, so on to our next thing. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the downwind sailing basics. And I mentioned this, I said wing on wing, like reaching, um, and I want you guys to think about that a little bit. What does it mean to like sail downwind? Why do you have two different types of like ways to sail downwind? And it's just a way to remember that you are sailing downwind and so your sails are gonna be further out than you are for upwind. So there's just, it's trying to get the maximum speed when you're sailing downwind. Starting off, we're gonna start with reaching. So I'll go back to this picture right here. And when we are reaching, that's gonna be at your broad reach here. So it's pretty close to running straight dead away from the wind, but your sails are still, they're not all the way out yet, but they're, they're almost all the way out. Um, I'm gonna show you this video that I have. It's a little bit, um, I'll, like you can, you can see the transition pretty well of how we go. And I want you guys to notice the crew especially. First things first that you might see is the sails are all the way out, right? They're not all, not all the way out, but they're three fourths way out. Um, and you see the crew, once again, he's wearing his orange life jacket. He has his hand out, you might notice that. And he's actually holding right there is his jib sheet. So instead of using like the cleats that run through this boat, he's actually holding onto the jib sheet and reaching it out all the way. And I'll play this video. So you see he's like holding it like that. And then he's reaching it out further, just like that. You can notice he really reaches it out. And that's because we want our jib sail to really be able to create like a parachute shape so that it can be sail at its maximum um, angle and its maximum speed at that angle. So you also, now I want you guys to also kind of watch me and what I do as the crew starts to reach his weight out. I, right here, I'm like starting to transition and move my weight out a little bit more. And that's just something to remember. Your body placement is really important when you are sailing. So uh, that's just something that you always wanna keep in mind is your body weight and where you're placing it. This picture right here is actually College of Charleston, but you'll notice that this girl, she's holding her jib sheet right there and you can see. And um, she has her jib sheet and that's what I mean. That's this right here. She's holding onto it and she's reaching it further out and that's so you can really extend that jib sail. Um, once again, these sails are eased and that's so when someone's sailing with you and they say, all right, let's go reaching, um, we'll be reaching now and they'll grab their, the crew will grab their jib sheet and kind of place it out of the boat getting it as far as they can with all, while also keeping this curvature shape on the jib sail. I'll play this video one more time so you guys can really see it. Right here. So you guys can see, kind of look what, what you should look for. Look how Josiah has his body weight out on that gunnel. It, he's really trying to get out of the boat. That's something that's really important. And just like that. Okay. Moving on to the next slide. And this is wing on wing. Before I show you guys the video, I really wanna show you this picture that I have here. Um, you'll notice that the sail, there's like the main sail. And I want you, this shroud right here that you can see that's on the sail, that's how you know that your sail is all the way out. You wanna get that sail all the way out touching the shroud. Um, and the crew right here with the green glove is holding onto the boom of the sail. And he's holding that boom out. And so that, that's way the main will make sure that it's not gonna like come back at you. Um, but it's also gonna make sure that your boom and sail are all the way out. The skipper is actually the one right here holding the jib sail. And 
the skipper is the one holding the jib sheet. So you kind of have a transition there when you go to wing on wing. And that's when you're sailing directly away from the wind, you're running away from the wind. Um, that's when you'll have the skipper actually is holding the jib sheet, the jib sail, and the crew is more of in charge of the mainsail. As the skipper, you don't have to hold your main sheet anymore because it is in the hands of your crew. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, I'll show this video and you guys can see it's a little bit rocky. That might be something that you would notice when you do go on, when you go on downwind for the first time and even in different conditions, you'll notice your boat rocks a little bit more because you have that balance between your mainsail and your jib sail. Um, Josiah um, in this position, he'll, he'll end up sitting back in, but at this moment, he's actually sitting up and that's, it's just another variation of sitting. So I'm popping that jib, you might notice, I'll play that one more time. I am bringing it towards me, popping it over, and you can see Josiah is holding that boom right there. I'll play it one more time so you can really see he's sitting down to the boat. Once again, these sails are on the opposite, they're on opposite sides. And I'm kind of just leaning out, making sure to get wind onto those sails. And once again, just a reminder, you don't need a lot of tiller movements in this position because you are sailing downwind. I do have up here that it says crew lifts up to the center board. So this is just another tactic. Um, sometimes you'll notice that when you do have the center board up, it actually makes your boat less tippy, which is something that's really interesting. You don't want to lift it all the way up. You only It matters how it varies really on the conditions, how much you want to lift it up, but probably just like a few inches up. Um, and that way, sometimes I'm on wing on wing and I lift it up all the way if the current's on my side. So that's, it's just working around and getting to know your boat and getting to know the feel of it and practicing with it and seeing what will make your boat faster. I have my sails out completely and the crew is that's holding the boom. So that's something to think about. I also want to mention that I do in this in this um, wing on wing, the crew is what's going to communicate and they're going to talk to you about the wind conditions. They might hold out the boom and they can look behind themselves and they can talk to the skipper that's right next to them and they can talk about the different pressure that they might feel. Um, we'll go through these steps and back to reaching and that's when your jib is held by your crew out of the boat. Um, once again, that's, these positions are when you are sailing downwind. You guys can feel free to take a picture of this slide because it's just kind of like a summary of everything we went through. When you are reaching on all that broad wheat reach, you have your main sheet out about three fourths the way. So not all the way, but out quite a lot. And your crew is the one that's taking the lure jib sheet and stretching out his or her arm all the way, kind of getting his or her body weight out of the boat. And you're really looking at that jib sail. That's the main key. Keep on watching your jib sail, even when you're, it doesn't even matter if you're like wing on wing or reaching or any point of sail that you're on, you want to be looking, at, the skipper and crew both want to be looking at the jib sail. The jib sail will have all the answers for what you may need to adjust on your boat. So it's really important to look at that jib sail and kind of think of like, oh, how can I get this to be optimal speed? When you are doing wing on wing, you are sailing dead downwind, you're on run it, you're running away from the wind, and you have your jib on the opposite side of your mainsail. So your jib's on the windward side. The skipper easing the mainsail out all the way, really wanting it on the shroud. That's what you want to see. And then the skipper is also responsible for holding out that jib on the windward side and really trying to get that parachute looking shape as well. Um, your crew would like needs to have the hold out the boom. On really windy days, this isn't necessarily necessary, but especially on like lighter days, that is something that you really have to do is hold using your hand, holding out the boom. Um, sometimes it's icy, which is interesting. So be sure to have gloves and it's cold. So um, if it's a cold day, be prepared. Scout's eyes prepared, so you might want to have warm gloves. Um, I've definitely been in that situation where you're holding a metal boom and you're holding that out. So that's a crew's job, holding out that boom. And then also communicating. The crew 
is super, super essential to what the skipper can see downwind because the skipper is looking forward, but the changing wind conditions are behind them. And the crew has the ability to look backwards while the skipper more is focused on looking forward. So that's your, as the job of the crew is really communicating these wind conditions, saying like, oh, hey, there's like more window on this side um, and talking about the different transitions of pressure in the wind. So the crew also, when you're holding out that boom, it's really essential that the crew says, uh, duck because um, you're having like a bad pressure and your boom's starting to come and I'll show you guys a little bit. Um, that's why it's really essential to have your crew communicating like if the pressure if it's easy to hold the boom out versus oh I'm fighting something. Um, and that's why you really have to talk to your crew about it and your skip crew has to be very vocal about what they're feeling, especially when you also are reaching and you have your sail in your hand and you're reaching it out as a crew and you're holding it out all the way out of the boat. If you feel not much pressure and you'll, you'll feel it in like, it's hard to explain it when you're virtual, but in real life, you'll notice that you, that you have like a strain on that um, line on that jib sheet that you really can feel. And you wanna be communicating that pressure that you feel to your skipper as a crew. So that way your skipper can say like, okay, um, I need to like head up more. I need to head down more And it. That's really why it's essential to be communicating between your crew and skipper. Once again, body placement, super, super, super essential in sailing. Doesn't matter if you're really downwind um, or if you're upwind, always be working and being aware of your body placement. One of my favorite lines is that one of my friends, she said that as a crew, you're never really comfortable because you're always trying to do your best to get your boat flat or get your boat a little bit healed when you're downwind. And that's why it's really essential to be aware of what your body weight and body placement is doing on that boat. Because it is quite interesting to what your, especially on like 420s and dinghies, you'll notice how much of an impact your body weight can make. So I'll leave that up for a second so you can like take a picture of it. Um, that is pretty much it though. Do you guys have any questions for me tonight? I'm excited to explain stuff and revisit videos. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I, I know I went through a lot of information. So feel free to let me know. These are my contacts as my Instagram up there. If you have that, you can DM me. Um, my email is also up here, but feel free to ask me. I'm open to any questions. If you want me to replay a video, go through tacking one more time, feel free. So you guys can pop those questions into the chat box and I will be ready to listen. So Izzy, while people have an opportunity to type up a question, let's uh, hear more about you. How long have you been sailing? Ooh, okay, so I've been sailing my whole life. I actually used to live in San Diego and our family would go out. I have really started competitively sailing in high school when I was in eighth grade. I joined the high school team and I've been out on the water ever since. I've loved every second of it and I'm absolutely hooked. And now in college, I will be ending up in college who knows where I'll be, but I will be sailing and I look forward to that. What's your favorite type of boat to sail? Okay, I, I might, it really matters on if you're like a keel boat or a dinghy boat. I absolutely love having spinnakers out, but as of right now, snipes, and that's actually this boat here. It's a, it's a yellow boat, we call it the banana boat sometimes. The snipe class is super fun. I, this is actually called a whisker pole right here, just some terminology. I absolutely love being on the snipes and it's such a fun fleet. A lot of competitive, it's called like serious, racing, serious fun, um, but I love it so much. And the, the you have bigger sails and it gets into really technical, technical on really depending on like the different types of sails that you have versus like quantum versus like North sails. So it's really interesting. And I've learned so much from that and from sailing different boats. I recommend to anyone that don't just focus on one certain type of sailboat, try to reach out to different fleets, try to join other classes of boats and try to get on as many boats as you can because you can learn from so many other boats that will help you in your sailing. What kind of boat would you like to sail that you haven't had a chance to sail yet? to try a wasp. Um, I don't have a picture of that right now, but you guys can look it up. It's kind of like a foiling boat. And I don't know if right now I'm heavy enough for it. Maybe in a lighter day I would be, but wasp like very fun. I know we have a small fleet of wasp in Annapolis and I love seeing them and going fast. And that is just very exciting to me. Uh, 
I have seen those. They do look fun. So very cool. Very cool. Uh, now in Sea Scouts, uh, what's your rank? What's my rank? Yeah. So right now I'm working on my ordinary rank um, out of ship 1959 in Annapolis, Maryland. Fantastic. Uh, well, this has been a lot of fun. I, we haven't seen any questions. We have lots of kudos. Kudos have come in on both uh, Zoom and Facebook. So lots of people saying great job. Um, and that is a testament to just how good you are and explaining how to sail. So, oh, it's, you know, what's, oh, that is not a question, another compliment. So again, lots, oh, here we go, a question. All right, have you been able to sail on the, uh, the Eagle? I have not, that I've had like, I've been looking at it. Um, actually one of the schools I'm looking at right now has that opportunity, so. Who knows? We'll see. That, that's how, if you've got an opportunity to do it, I say go for it. It looks really fun and exciting. Uh, and hmm, your skipper says uh, Bravo Zulu. So again, uh, again, just a fantastic presentation. And this has been the first webinar that we've had that's been completely youth led for all of the content. So uh, you've done a fantastic job and you've set a gold standard for everyone else who follows in your wake. So uh, fantastic job. So uh, I'm watching for other questions. It doesn't look like any have come in other than lots of people are saying you're a fantastic presenter. Uh, Izzy will be back. So we will do another sailing webinar probably in the spring. Uh, we. We have a bunch planned out and uh, I posted in chat on both the uh, Facebook uh, uh, comments and here in Zoom for the January 26th webinar on maritime safety equipment. Uh, we will have other webinars posted. Uh, we do have two scheduled for February, might have a third, uh, trying to get that locked down. And we appreciate everyone who spent time uh, this recording will be immediately on Facebook. We'll share it to YouTube. And Izzy, thank you. And we'll give you the last word for tonight. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. I had so much fun. Uh, feel free to email me or uh, DM me on Instagram if you don't have an email. Um, I will respond back if you have like a specific question or some questions about types of boats. Feel free to let me know and I'm here to help you guys. Thank you so much.